Welcome back, everyone. The term third force is not new. In France, it was a coalition which governed in France from 1947 to 1952 in South Africa. The third force was a term used by leaders of the ANC during the late 1980s and early 1990s to refer to a clad inside force believed to be responsible for a surge in violence in some of their towns in Nigeria. It is pretty much about how to end the two horse race between the APC and the PDP. My guest is from that constituency and has shown interest in running in 2019. He is Kingsley Mahalu, a political economist, lawyer, and former deputy CBN governor. Thank you so much, Professor Mugalu, for your time on the program tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Now you have uh, declared your interest. The last time you, you were not clear whether or not you were going to run for the number one job. But I, I want to take you on, on one thing that he said. You said, and I quote, we're exhausted by these political, these politicians who go in and out of uh, alliances and um, they have nothing about they, they care nothing about the ordinary nigerians you said it is time for a radical change in the political leadership of nigeria movement of the people what exactly do you mean well what i mean uh, Sharon, is that nigerian citizens have been held down uh, in a certain type of vice grip by career politicians whose only interest is their vested interest they're there for the money, they're there for power, for the sake of power. And if you want to be charitable, some of them may say they're there on behalf of their ethnic groups. And when you put all this together, it equals poverty. That's why Nigeria today is the poverty capital of the world. Nigeria needs a different type of leadership. When you say poverty capital, what do you exactly do you What mean? I mean is that Nigeria has the highest numbers of absolutely poor people in the world today. We've overtaken India in that dubious distinction. And remember that India has six times more people than Nigeria. 1.2 billion population, we're 200 million, yet we have more poor people uh, than India. That's terrible. And that's the reason why I believe we need a radical change in the leadership of Nigeria. We need to take our country from poverty to prosperity. We need to take Nigeria from disunity, from just being a mere country, physically, to being a real nation. The, the, the reason why a lot of Nigerians, who uh, some of them perhaps you have uh, met them online sure. some, uh, at some point, who may be uh, somewhat pessimistic about your ambition, is the fact that you've been in the financial sector and you know just how it is for a non-player in that sector to come and uh, disrupt the process. A lot of people will be asking the question, politically speaking, do you have the muscle to be able to disrupt what exactly? Because you are looking for a movement here. That's what you, you said earlier. What exactly, how exactly do you hope to achieve your dreams? Let me actually flip your question. You talked about my being in the financial sector. Actually, all my life, I had not been in the financial sector for most of my life. Most of my life was as a United Nations official, building broken nations. And that's another problem we have today in Nigeria. Nigeria is a broken country. So if I have been building broken nations around the world, I want to lead to building Nigeria. So that's to tell you that leadership is a skill that is transferable. Now, you talk about politics. We are going to be communicating a message and a vision to the people of Nigeria of what a different Nigeria can look like. And we are going to situate their enlightened self-interest in that vision. Do you want jobs or do you want to continue in poverty? Do you want good educational systems? Do you want good health care? That's what we want. That's what we need. And we need people with the technocratic experience of solving problems to make this happen. And that's what I bring to the table. Without a political network. Who told you I don't have a political I'm network? I'm asking, do you have? <laughs> I do. Really? Of course. Of what party? Well, my party will be announced next month. Really? Is it the UPP? Because I understand that you have links with them. They were a party that announced their endorsement of my interest in running for president. I'm not a member of the UPP. So you are announcing your party? I'll be announcing the party that I will be contesting the platform for the presidency 
next month. Because a lot of people are wondering when Professor Mohalu is talking about the political movement, disrupting the process, I mean, the, the, uh, the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, they were looking, maybe there are some Nigerians that are being built technologically somewhere that are going to be used within the system. The Nigerians that we've not seen before, because the big question would be, in this political system, it looks so much like the same of the same, like some people have uh, put it. Well, yes, it looks like same of the same, but remember, this is 2019 we're talking about, not 2015. So for people like me to come out and declare for the presidency, it shows that we feel that Nigeria cannot go on the way it is. Our political leaders have failed us, and I think the results are very clear. We shouldn't even spend our time debating that. It's to explain to the people how this affects them and how their future can be better. And that's why I'm offering myself. I have been... Uh, a nation builder around the world, my career in the United Nations. I have been an economic manager as deputy governor of the Central Bank. I have been a diplomat. I have been a professor at one of the world's most prestigious universities. I am a builder. I am a fixer. I am somebody who actually takes people or institutions from one place to the next place in progress. The brilliance of your, of your delivery and some of the ideas you have brought to the table will make a lot of Nigerians see uh, the development from the days of the UPN to the NPN to the days of uh, the First Republic. We've seen brilliant politicians sure. who never get to power. Should you not be able to achieve your dreams, would you be willing to help any government that is voted into power in 2019? My business and my vision is to serve this country as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, I believe that we are going to win, and I intend to win. So let's, let's, let's see the results of the election first. And I believe that with the message we are giving out to the people of Nigeria, I think that most Nigerians recognize that it's now time for something new, something different, something bold. And that's what I stand for. I will make Nigeria a very different country from what you know now. Who is your political godfather? God is my father. I mean, physically speaking, of course. God is in politics, too. Really? Yes. In which of the parties? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> because real, I mean, re in politics realistically as, speaking. Well, he's in politics as God. But more seriously, I don't have a political godfather. So where are you I getting the money from? What money? The ones you're using to go around your town halls and, I mean, your, your rallies. Or... People are supporting me. Nigerians are contributing to support me. You'll be very surprised with what's going to happen in 2019. Really? Let me tell you, change, real transformations always happen when we least expect it. The first thing we have to do is to defeat our fear that it cannot be done. Because this is a democracy. If the people vote for their own liberation, if the people of Nigeria decide that they've had enough of poverty and unemployment, it's their choice. And if they vote for someone who has the skills, the experience, the track record of creating progress, then we will make progress. Are you scared or worried about the issues of zoning? That is not that's relevant. A, that's a strong political ad arrangement that has had a stay on our political path, Z our politi zoning. political practice. Either yeah. we like it or not, no. somehow sure. ethnicity and yeah. the issues of religion has a big stay on our, on our politics. We what do we do? We will be engaging with the people of Nigeria and explaining to them that zoning, what's the result of 20 years of zoning? Zoning is not constitutional. The Constitution does not recognize zoning. It's, it's a just, moral arrangement. It's not a moral arrangement. It's right. a practical... And, and, and for for it's sort of, a, those a, who have practiced it, they believe well, that it's, a, it's, it's just morally acceptable no, for us to give fair share to each of the uh, divides of the country. Well, the point I'm trying to make is this, Sheo, that we have had 20 years of zoning. What's the result? Nigerians are getting poorer. We are 4,000 megawatts of electricity. That's the bottom line. People are getting poorer. So many people, unemployment has risen by 100%, over 100% between 2015 second quarter and today. It was 8% when, when President Buhari came to office. It's 19% today. So you can keep zoning. You want to zone yourself into more and more poverty? That's your choice.
Some people, and some of us believe, 2019 is zoned to competence. 2019 is zoned to progress. 2019 is zoned to the liberation of the people of Nigeria from the bondage in which the political class has kept them. You, That's my own idea of zoning. Do you have ties with former President Olusha Gwambasongo? I know him and I respect him. Have you met him since all of this? Of course. Have you informed him about his I have. ambition? Of course. Is he supporting among, you? among many others in my consultative process. Is he supporting you? I don't know who he's supporting. He says he's, he doesn't have a candidate that he's supporting. I've, I've read that in the papers. Are, are you, do you belong to his uh, movement? I don't. Are you going to be part of it? I'm joining a political party next month. But that's not a political party anyways. Well, I'm joining a political party on which I'll contest for the elections. Okay. I mean, let me take you to one thing that you said. Okay. Perhaps. Let's talk about some of the issues. Sure. Uh, okay. Let me take you to that issue. <laughs> you said, and I quote, yeah. Buhari's best is not good enough. Indeed. It's very clear. He may have Will performed... it be unfair for you to say that? Why would it be unfair? I mean, Nigeria today, more people are unemployed, 100% more unemployment in his three years of the presidency. Poverty has increased. Security has worsened. I don't understand. Am I supposed to be politically correct to say that he has performed when wise, the results Statistics are wise, the number of strong places or local government areas Boko Haram was holding is now not the same story presently. Let me tell you why that argument cannot hold. We cannot, there were initial successes against Boko Haram, but the security situation today in Nigeria is worse than when Buhari came to office. So what look, would you do at, if you become at, president? Just, no, no, just no. a moment. What would you do? What would I do? If you, if, you, if you get into office, perhaps Na in the first three days. Yes, national security is going to become very holistic. And we are going to get on with police reform. We are going to toughen our control of Nigeria's borders. In the first three days? No, not in the first three would days. Would you declare the a state of emergency on our security? What you will do in the first three days is to appoint a national security advisor who is super competent and set in place a security architecture within the first two or three days of your presidency. That's, what, that's how you will fight insecurity successfully. Because we've seen leaders cannot, across the world of course. Who, who, has, who have picked areas where they, they discover that they are most important for them. Absolutely. And in the first week of of their entering into office, you see a rapid movement into those areas. National, what, would that, what would that be for you? National security is securing the lives of Nigerian citizens and their properties, the number one job of any government. And because we have to sleep safely and soundly at night, it is going to be a number one priority would for Would you me. declare that of emergency? I will. On, on security in Absolutely. Nigeria. What about education? And unemployment. Those are the two things we're going to tackle first. Let me, let me take you to a, perhaps a familiar ground. Uh, we will close on this one. Thank and you. It's on issues of uh, monetary policy. The yes. rate of the Naira to the dollar now. Are you scared about it? The rate of the Naira to the dollar. You see, the problem we have in Nigeria is that a lot of people do not understand economics. The reason the rate of the Naira is what it is to the dollar is because Nigeria is not a productive economy. And that's one area you can leave it to me when I become president. All right. We must leave it at that. Always a pleasure talking to you. If we go on, we can talk all day with Professor Kingsley Muhalu, a former deputy uh, uh, CBN governor. Thank you so much for your time. Thank and you. I wish you the very best Thank you. in the coming days. Thank you. Well, up next on the program, how was a security compromise out of Senate?